give him a little, a little. Oh, what's I should, going I should on? transition it over. There we go. What's, what's, what, what's going on? Kings, queens, and monarchs of every element. I'm here with E3 Yu-Gi-Oh. We are going to be reacting to this week's progression series because they've got some spicy, spicy uh, Edison adjacent, maybe even a little more powerful than Edison decks going on here i say a little bit as i stare at a screen that contains raigeki harpy's feather duster dark hole and ring of destruction <laughs> jeez that's insane all right so this is a good time we're going to we're going to start by pulling up gauge's deck i want to want to see all right what i'm gonna thoughts i'm gonna take a look at it all right i'm clicking the spoiler button i'm doing it all right i'm doing it Wait, but before I do it, everyone has to follow RJ in the chat right now, and everybody has to subscribe to RJ on YouTube. Before I click this spoiler button, that's what has to happen. Mm, that is that is required, actually. Uh, in fact, we have a meter going. Uh, we can tell every single person who has not followed or subscribed yet. Exactly. Now that everybody who's watching this has done that, I'm going to go yeah. ahead and click this spoiler. What do we got? What are we working with? Okay, S wow. Um, this is, this is a Blackwing deck. <laughs> it is a Blackwing deck. So the one thing you're going to really need to know about this, uh, about this list, aside from the fact that some of the cards that might be missing from the extra deck, especially are things that they just may not have pulled because of the nature of progression format is that, uh, gauge a while back to try and stop Blackwings from taking over the series banned Shura. So Shura is not legal in this format. So I'm curious what your first thought is seeing Black Wings, knowing that Shura is banned. Well, Gage has got he's got some interesting choices. He's got double Armageddon Knight, he's got Breaker to kind of supplement the loss of monsters. Losing Shura hurts. That is one of the best Blackwing monsters. If not the best Blackwing monster, especially going first. He's also got Sangin and Plague. Sangin, not bad in the Blackwing deck, especially because you just need to get to your dudes. I think what I'm really concerned with, and maybe concerned is the wrong word, what I'm really like thinking is going to be insane is the fact that he has Snatch Steel plus Triple Brain Control. That seems very powerful as a way to permanently steal threats. For sure. Of course, Premature Burial with the Bryonic, the Dragon of the Ice Barrier in his extra deck is insane. Now, it's Premature obscene. Burial... Yeah, it does destroy the monsters when it's destroyed, but when it's returned to the hand, it doesn't destroy the monster that it's equipped to. So you can keep bouncing it with Bryonic and specialing out the monster that you discarded to bounce it, which is awesome. Yeah, absolutely but ridiculous. I am, I am genuinely scandalized that that combo has yet to come up in progression series so far. Yeah, I'm actually shook on it. Of course, Pot of Greed, that's a fair and balanced card. And Ring of Destruction... In a deck with like piercers and colutes, that's just disgusting. This deck looks very, very good. I would bring this to an Edison tournament. It looks very, very good. I'm not sure what Armageddon Knight's doing exactly besides sending Plague or Vayu, but that's maybe good enough. I don't know. Maybe he just didn't have a better starter or something like that. I think I given know. the way that consistency works in a format like this, it makes sense to me to have it in there. Uh, it's just it's just a good way to get an engine started in a format where it's just like not something you can typically do. For sure, for sure. It just seems like given the given the power level of this deck, Armageddon Knight seems a little silly. But maybe that's just Maybe that's just because there's no Shura, and I'm I'm not sure what cards he's working with, so that's probably what it is. For sure. I think, so one thing that interests me, and maybe, maybe what I would do under these circumstances, I might actually take an Armanite out for a Tomato. I think in a deck where the tuners are as important as they are in this one, being able to stick a non-tuner or be able to get yourself into Plague early on or Gale early on, could be really helpful and that lets you flex into the Armanite when you want to but just establish his position in a way that a single Armanite might not I agree I agree and I'm I've always been a really big proponent of the 1400 attribute based battle recruiters I've built plenty of decks around them I think they're very strong cards 
And I think right here, replacing the second Armageddon Knight with, um, with the Mystic Tomato could be good. I think just at that point, it would make your reinforcement of the army a little weak. So you might have to add a second Mystic Tomato over that reinforcement of the army. But mm, I actually really like that. Uh, the Rota, I don't feel like accomplishes much in here. You've got a billion normal summons to work with. And so making your like uh, 21st card be access to another normal summon doesn't really make much sense here to me. Yeah, for sure. One thing that Armageddon Knight does do is it does immediately get you access to Plague. It's a two card level six, which is not great, but it can be okay. And Armageddon Knight also does immediately turn on your premature burial, which is something I'm not really used to having to consider, obviously. So it could be better. It could be worse. It's just the one thing that like kind of sticks out to me is like, I'm not really sure about this, but we'll see. Yeah, this seems like a ridiculous... And, and honestly, even without Shura, the staples that you have access to here, I would say make this, like, a significantly more powerful Blackwing deck than you'd have access to in Edison. For sure, for sure. I mean, cards like Regeki, Harpy's Feather Duster, these cards just don't exist in Edison format for a reason. They're incredibly powerful, incredibly busted. They're one-sided. Being able to Harpy's Feather Duster your opponent's three back row when you have a Black Whirlwind in play is, like kind of ridiculous so we'll it, see if that comes up it baffles me to this day that they insist on using a uh, traditional format when doing progression series just <laughs> i think it's cool it's something that i'm not sure exactly how it's going to pan out mm -hmm. it maybe accelerates the episodes a little bit in a some cases bit, yeah but uh we'll see we'll see i i've never again i've never really watched this series i've never really sat down and watched the series so it's going to be it's going to be a good time to check it out. I'm excited. Okay. So with that, it's time for us to check out the other deck. Now, Simo's deck interests me particularly. I do know from what you've told me, Simo's playing a variation of deck that you have taken a fondness to in Edison format, which is the Telekinetic Powerwell Welly Dad deck. Now that I've clicked on the spoiler button, I shall tell you my opinions here. <laughs> okay. I have some opinions In due on time. some particular cards. Uh, <coughs> this is, this even more so than the Blackwing deck, I feel like, just displays how much higher power this format is than, than Edison is. Yeah, this is nuts. This deck is very good. I, I like this deck a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I am immediately drawn to the painful choice. <laughs> he doesn't have emergency teleport. He never pulled telly. Uh, but he does have painful choice, which is just genuinely a better card. Yeah. Yeah, I would I would take that trade. If my opponent yeah. was like, okay, you don't get emergency teleport, but you have painful choice. I'd be like, ah, that sounds about fair. <laughs> Without no, Wolf, thank ridiculous. you for the raid. Shout out to them. Wow. And Clutch thank you, rate. Renee, for the sub. A third month in a row. So the thing that... There, there are a couple of things that I think maybe we could have built a little bit better around. Uh, I think two Rikos and a BLS is a little bit sus. Like, even with Painful Choice... If you open BLS before you open before you like get painful choice, you just have a dead card in your hand and are forced to like make a particular choice off of off of painful choice. I don't know. It seems a little bit suspect. I think that the deck could have been streamlined a little bit. I think the double Ryko BLS is a little bit of a trap here. What do you think? For for me, what sticks out immediately is the two copies of Pyramid Turtle and the fact that this deck is 41 cards. Like, that's my first, like, yes. first impression. The recruiter lineup was the other thing I was uh, I was thinking about. Yeah, sure. I don't like Pyramid Turtle at all in this deck. First off, it can't be searched by Goblin Zombie, so it's just kind of a bit of a slower normal summon in a deck that... If you look at it, we've got a fair bit already. we got Armageddon, we got... I'm not going to count Greffer, but because he can technically special summon himself, but we got Caius... We got double Goblin Zombie, we got triple Krevins, we got triple Tomato already, we've got Plague, double Raikou, Sangin, and Spear Reaver. 
ton of normal summons. And then on top of that, is drawing Pyramid Turtle better than being one card deeper towards your painful choice? I don't think so. I think we should always just try to go to 40, maximize our chances at hitting the broken stuff, Pot of Greed, Painful Choice, etc. Mm -hmm. Given what I know about the card pool, I know that there was potential to even optimize this a bit further using stuff like Upstar Goblin, so I think that there definitely could have been some cuts here and there on some of the unnecessary normal summons, and then streamlined towards more of the spell cards that really, really do the damage here. Yeah, I wonder, so so he doesn't have access to Zombie Master Mizuki, which definitely hurts the the zombie lineup. He also doesn't have access to uh, Book of Life. And of course, he instead has pre mat <laughs> So, you know. <laughs> uh, that is pretty good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, mean, pretty good I, I would call that an upgrade, but I wonder if there's even a world where we take out like the Rikos, the Pyramid Turtles, and the BLS. And I wonder if there's like a secondary thing we could be modulating into. I wonder if like like you said, like Upstart Goblins could be a way to go. Although I'm not sure how I'd feel about Upstart Goblin in this list. Uh, I don't I just know, how easy is it? Will. <laughs> yeah, Last Will goes crazy here. I don't, I don't know exactly, um, I don't know exactly if Upstar Goblin would be great. Looking at the extra deck, no Goyo Guardian, no Colossal Fighter. Might be a little bit difficult to just execute some kill combos. And for that reason, I think the Raikos and the BLS stay. I think what happens instead is we cut the Pyramid Turtles. We cut maybe one or two other things here or there, and then we get in some extra light monsters. I think that that's what, mm, the way I'd approach it. Okay. I don't remember, yeah. Chat, do you know if he has, like, DD Warrior Lady? Or, I mean, that doesn't help you toward your light count, but... It can if it hits it the grave for whatever yeah, reason, yeah. You like, you could discard it to Bryonic Phoenix Wing, that sort of thing. Painful choice, even. You could painful choice for it. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. And you can also Rota for it, which is a great option, honestly. So, yeah, DD Warrior Lady would be an excellent fit here. And in general, I think in these types of limited environments... Well, I already think DD Warrior Lady is like a top five monster in Edison format, but especially in limited environments, when your opponent may or may not have like a full suite of busted monsters, being able to answer their busted monster for just one card can't really ask for much more than that. Agreed. Uh, maybe even I think he has access to Zaborg now because of Gold Series having it at common. Might be something to include. I I recognize that normally you wouldn't include more monarchs in in like the full access build because they don't help you as much toward the OTKs. They help you clear threats. They help you set up. They uh, eat up back row, things like that for you. I wonder if Zaborg might be a way to go here. One thing that's super interesting to me is instant fusion plus thousand eyes restrict. That's an awesome combo. Love that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> but one thing that's a little silly is instant fusion with Fiend Skull Dragon. I don't think you can instant fusion out Fiend Skull Dragon. I'm pretty sure that the fusion summon of Fiend Skull Dragon oh, it's... has to be done. I could be wrong. Someone you want to correct me on that? Light monster that he absolutely has access to. Mind yes. Master. Oh yeah, that would again be just like excellent for this type of deck. Yeah, Mind Master would be incredible. How, how does Fe how does Fiend Skull Dragon work again? I'm I'm reading it right now. I'm pulling him up. Uh, yep, by the above fusion material monster. So you cannot mm. actually instant fusion into Fiend Skull Dragon. <laughs> okay. Fun fact. I, I know this because I tried to build a deck in Edison format that could utilize Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon to bring back Fiend Skull Dragons that you'd instant fusioned out. Unfortunately, you can't. Do that that. Does, yeah, it doesn't work, sadly. That is it would be really, bad. really cool. It would be really, really cool if you could. Because being able to bring back Fiend Skull Dragon with Red Eyes would be sick, but yeah. yeah. I think a slightly mm. more streamlined version of this deck, bringing in Mind Master, taking out the Pyramid Turtles, would be like nearly unbeatable if he figures out how to play it. Yeah, I just think there's just far too many normal summons here. Especially, you know, 41 cards. You want to be down to 40 to see your painful choice. There's just no, no two ways about it. You All know, right. 
they're approaching Duelist Revolution. I think that's next week. If he gets a Veiler, are you on like one for one Veiler Mindmaster here? Wait, does he have one for one? He does have one for one. Yeah. Okay. Well, I know he has Metamorphosis. So I feel like you should definitely be on one for one Metamorphosis, at least for Thousand Eyes. And then you should also be on one for one just to like ditch a card, like ditch Mali, Special Summon Mind Master. And then you have a seven star. It's like a two card seven star. It's not bad. And then you can power well back to my master, or you can set up for your BLS that way instantly. I definitely think you should be on one for one. I think one for one is very broken, especially in like, yeah, I know it's a minus and it's a minus one, but the fact of the matter is it's just a fast card and you just need the speed. Yeah. And then the metamorphosis would also be really good. I think. And, and this deck only really cares about card economy to like so far an extent, right? Like what and what matters at the end of the day is being able to put out pushes and then defend those pushes. So exactly. So one for one exactly. helps out with that a lot. Yeah, one for one could be really good. And then on top of that, I think he does have copies of Chaos Sorcerer. So if he was able to play like one for one, get a few more lights in here, he could easily be playing Chaos Sorcerers alongside with his dad and his BLS and OTKs would just be super easy. So I don't know. For real. Yeah. I'm interested. Okay. Let's check out let's check out the duels. I figure I'll keep us on you I do know, so one thing I know from this is that uh they do take a second to roast the Edison cube for having Chris the crack of dawn in it. <laughs> oh that's hilarious. <laughs> like cards they're, too good. They're hating on Can't Chris. Have it in here. It's pretty good. Okay, so do you want me to pull up the video, or do you want to pull it what up? What I how was do you thinking do this? I would do is if it stops buffering. There we go. What I'll do is I'm going to stop the music, and I will unmute it, and then I'll screen share on, uh, on Discord. Does that sound good to you? It sounds good. I think... Are you going to be able to pause the video if I need you to pause it so we can like comment, like react to it and stuff or Yeah, absolutely. All right, cool, cool, cool. All yeah, right. that works then. That works. I was All trying right. to pull it up, but no need. Looks like we're Let's just going to be able to have it like this. Heck yeah. And you should yeah. be able to see it now. Now let's see if this crashes my entire stream. <laughs> it just all crashes. Just going to crash okay. the entire thing. Okay. Chat, how's your night going? Tell us in the chat right now how your night's going. Right, we got game one. That's a pretty cool animation. First first off, one thing I want to say about Alex is his production quality. Phenomenal. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, amazing. absolutely. He's got, he's got like the clean production down to a science. One thing that's really cool about this, this graphic here is not only is the versus super cool, it's like the way it's overlaid onto the artwork is cool. He's got that secret rare kind of overlay, and he has it lined up between the Vayu and the Dark Armed. Super yes. sick. And super, super sick. Super and if sick. you watch the verses, there's an explosion animated in the background of it. All right, like, let's see this. Let's see if it'll load. <laughs> That's really cool. As someone who like that. Makes well, Gage, uh, all there's that nothing so hidden about hidden arsenal. Uh, the They're fact make that the set terrible is jokes for a bit. As they this. Do. This might this might be suffering. This is the hardest part, I think, of the game. When players have cards like Painful Choice and Pot of Greed, the rock, paper, scissors is really what it comes down to here. What are you picking, RJ, in Ooh, rock, paper, okay. scissors? So I know that Gage kind of picks it random, like according to like a randomness in his brain. So he doesn't have like a randomization method, and that means it always has bias, right? So you've got to be thinking, like, what, like, what is he biased toward? And okay. I think, I think that, like, the first thought would be rock. Like, Gage is a very just, like, get into it kind of guy. But I also think Gage would be expecting, expecting us to expect him to have rock. And I think that he would want to, like, metagame around it. So I think he's choosing Scissors or Rock. And I think, given Scissors or Rock, I would 
that he's throwing scissors or rock, I go for rock here. But if I really want to try to get it in one shot, I'd go, uh, I would go. No, I'd still go rock. I don't know what I'm trying. I'm like metagaming myself here. <laughs> I'm yeah, I know. You, if you want to, if you wanted the next level, you could go paper, but that just, that's just like an unnecessary risk. I feel like rock is the safe bet. I'd that's go like, rock here a hundred percent of the time. That's too. like playing a lower percentage. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Plus, Gage is probably the type of guy who picks scissors going first. I I'm just saying, like, he's probably just trying to pick the scissors. That makes sense to me. Now, one thing to know here is that uh, they do not have first turn draw in this format. Two things they don't have are okay, first that changes turn draw a lot. and priority. Interesting. Well, priority makes sense because just based off their viewership, it'd be really hard to explain it. Yeah, for sure. Then second off the first turn draw thing also you'd have to explain it so i feel like just for the the sake of like unifying everything including like modern Yu-Gi-Oh plus this makes sense that they just have the more modern rulings at least from my perspective yeah but didn't we end up doing no first turn draw when we did wave motion Yu-Gi-Oh? i don't really remember i think we did choose to do no first turn draw in general because i think just no first turn draw is the correct rule it is just the way that every card game should be played. Yeah, I like I like no first turn draw. I think it's good. I think it's been good for the game ever since it was initiated. I still think going first is incredibly broken, but we'll see if that's the case. All right. Gage, uh, there's nothing hidden about Hidden Arsenal. Uh, the fact that the set hidden is arsenal. hiddenly bad, it should not be a surprise to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, How are you feeling? Uh, some iconic synchros, you know, the DT cards got to re get reprinted they gotta somewhere. Gotta, yeah. they, they got to talk about it. They got to chat for a million, million like years. That. But man, you're right. <laughs> There's nothing good about it. All the good cards yes. are hiding okay. away. Okay, the dialogue's yeah. good. The exposition's like, good. I also like the music choice. Good, like Miss Valley it's very like, Velo, this is an like, epic battle, and it kind of like, juxtaposes their the future, dialogue. Like, right now, these cards are This is terrible. like the, uh, Nat the Avengers. This after the Avengers of YouTube. I saw Nat That's how I feel this about weekend. it. It was hilarious. That's pretty much Simo's entire channel, isn't it? And this music, this particular kind of production came in for Sure, he does a lot when you're playing a deck of all traps. Obviously, my opponent didn't know that going into it. But so I think this it was a good like time. A it was a good time. For anyone who saw us at YCS Las Vegas, That's I hope sick. you had a good time. Hope very, you, very uh, sick. Or thank you, rather, for saying hi to us. It was great seeing you all. And uh, just getting back in the saddle of Prague. I know Gage is uh, right about on the verge of sending YCS my Vegas. ass into the banning. So yeah. this is right that before is not going to be the case. Alex, ready, unfortunately, came down with I'm COVID. Ready, Let's get it going. That's true. All right, shout out to Patreon. Derek yes. Gage, I do thank think it's really funny that Alex chose to play Welladad like the day after I've been obsessed with it all weekend. Right, I, just I just like, like couldn't lost, shut lost up about this these. deck, We're and I was just like, "Well, first. I guess I'm playing it." Oh, I think I meant to go second. I think first of all, all right, it. check out this hand. What are we thinking with this hand? Oh my goodness! I think we're winning with this. This hand's hand. pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, does, does Alex does have Stardust Dragon, if I remember correctly? Yeah, he does have. I think he has two Stardust Dragon. He has Stardust for sure. Take note of that Pyramid Turtle. Imagine that Pyramid Turtle is just. One card deeper. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm thinking. Yeah. Or like if it's that good to keep turtle is like one for one. Oh my. Oh no. That seems God. pretty that seems pretty sick. One for one into Mind Master. That does seem pretty nasty. That does seem seems pretty nasty. Pretty now good. he doesn't he doesn't have enough quite yet to go for an OTK unless Age attacks into his pyramid turtle. And he would have enough. Yeah. I agree. I think we open set Pyramid Turtle. I think because that that holds our board presence. That gets us to Goblin Zombie, which is like our most important combo piece in this deck. Unfortunately, that doesn't get you to Mizuki, but a Goblin Zombie Search is a discard off of Greffer or Brio, both of which are are like crucial for this strategy. Yeah. Alternatively, well, do they know what each other's playing yet, or is it a surprise? No, they don't know yet. Okay, so since it's a surprise, I think it's not correct to make Stardust in the dark. Plus, you have no trap cards to back up your Stardust. For sure. I think actually in this format as well, going first, it's only good if you really have Pot of Greed. And if you don't have Pot of Greed, it's kind of better to go second because you can get more out of your battle phase. 
and these decks are crazy fast they can kill each other super easily so yeah. i wonder if he had wanted to choose to go second especially with the deck that needs just that extra little resource to go for game but something i'm not really i'm not really thinking of. yeah it's definitely yeah. a different format for sure yeah set pyramid turtle probably the safest bet all right let's see I think where that's the best place like the wisest mentality. <laughs> and for what I remember as well, six years, I, also I, I will let you. I, yes, yes. If you will allow every it, version. I will uh, let you go uh, first here. I will swing the turn around to you. That's, I'll be that's fine. I'll okay, so I said I'll choosing to go second. Traps. So I, I, I like I'm that. Yeah. I like that a lot. I think his hand is going to be very good going second. No problem, dude. I was going to say, I do know that they banned all the hand disruption, like trap dash shoot confiscation, for sure. So. Every die roll this week. What were we going to say about Gage? So oh, without without Black first, Whirlwind, Gage doesn't have a very proactive choice, opening I, I, I play, you right? Too much power. You're like, I actually get to Soroko's kind of not very good <laughs> opening. Yeah. Armageddon Knight's okay, but... Yeah, and most of his trap cards are actually dead without a monster in play. Oh my god. <laughs> Tell me what it's like, like Alex Simo. Like I was getting hit with all weekend. That's pretty nuts. I was like, oh, that's pretty man, good. Now, what I would have actually done here ah, if I was so Alex mm -hmm. is I would have used Giant Trunade. <laughs> and here's my reason. Here's mm -hmm. my reason. You're just attacking with Pyramid... Well, I wouldn't have even maybe used the Giant Trunade. I was You're just attacking that. with Pyramid Turtle, right? Yeah, yeah. I think Simo's getting a little antsy by playing this right here. Yeah, you either Trunade or you do nothing. I think Trunade's pretty good, and then you can go for a, a big push. You can go for... You can pitch Mally to special Greffer, normal Krevins, make something happen there. Or you can pitch Mally off of Greffer's effects and Plague, make something happen that way. Hit for like 4,200 after a giant Trunade. You could do something like that. Sandbag the Feather Duster. You know Gage is going to set those two cards next turn. He might even set a third card. Maybe. So you can get extra value, but... It's neither here nor there. This Feather Duster is very good. I, I can't deny a plus one when I see one, especially when you're already up plus one from having that turn draw. For sure. I think, I don't know. I think that if you can't make a big push and set up a like big position, I wouldn't try to do much this turn. I think, I think I'm sitting on a Pyramid Turtle for, for a turn because I want to see if I can get like, more than one synchro out of this play. Uh, Nim Nim, the man himself, is here. Welcome to the stream, and thank you for the primer. What have you missed? You missed us talking about your deck. Your deck this week, your list is nearly immaculate. Like, it is such a good list. What's up, Gage? How you doing? <laughs> Yeah, I actually talked about this exact thing in one of my very first videos. It's kind of funny. I talked about having, well, it's not this exact thing, obviously, because I've never played a format Harpy's Feather Duster besides like Modern Yu-Gi-Oh! But I, I talk about having Giant Trunade and Heavy Storm in your hand and why you should lead on Giant Trunade because your opponent is going to think you don't have Heavy Storm. And if they draw a new back row, they're going to set that as well. So they're going to play even further into your Heavy Storm after the Giant Trunade, and you're going to get them even more so off the Heavy Storm than if you just gun it that first turn. And this is particularly if you can't go for game. So like, let's say let's say you can deal 4,000 damage, kind of to what Simo can do here, is deal 4,000 damage. Maybe it's best to go for Giant Trunade. Next turn, you go for the Feather Duster, deal the next 4,000, and you've cleared all the back row. So I think it's a little bit it's just like a sequencing thing where you can get the card they draw off the top uh, with the with the guaranteed destruction. If that makes I like sense. it. OK, so yeah. you're Simo in this situation. You've got this hand. What is your first turn? I'm probably just attacking with Pyramid Turtle. I'm probably not even I'm probably not even Feather Dustering. I'm probably just attacking with Pyramid Turtle. If Pyramid I Turtle agree. trades with one of the back row. That sucks, but there's not going to be much that I think Gage will use on a Pyramid Turtle turn one. I just don't think. Either that, or, you know, if he goes Feather Duster, then I think you do want to at least attack with a couple different monsters, start applying some pressure. 
see what you can put together. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Let's see what we got. Great cards. Oh, this tells you what I'm on to. Um, all right. Well, you got rid of torrential tribute. So it's the Icarus TT attack. and the Icarus attack. That's Gage. a that's a risky set up. without a without a monster to I, use I, I, it I, with, I, I, right? It's kind of risky. Clear it's just feather duster. Did Heavy you? storm is banned. Okay, I'm gonna speculate. So it's just feather duster. Do you guys want the DB vod? Yo. Is it possible you spun an unbanned ticket? That's a heck of a hookup. Maybe we'll we'll see. It's very possible. We could use the DB. That way we could see. Gage's hand as well. Sure. That's also could be the case. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, in either case, I need to actually. Yeah, I think I think I'm either just attacking with pyramid, like full conservative. Of fact. I pulled this today. I or want to special summon Dark Greffer by pitching Destiny Hero Malicious from my oh, hand. Oh, did you get that in turbo? Okay, I this did. sets up Mali. What else does this I'm do? Doing this. Right? I'm doing this too, with Trinity. Yeah. You can make a Stardust here. Let's go ahead you and could, that, but Let's get one out of the deck. I don't know. Yeah, do you want I'm not sure I like uh, a turn no, one good. Stardust without back row, yeah, right? This is something you talk about all the time with first. Edison. Stardust is actually an extremely I, I weak card on its own. But it doesn't, uh, we'll but it becomes strong yeah, it's when it's thing. supported uh, by back row, one. right? And if we have no back row in yep. hand. We're just, we're going in. Uh, let's go for Stardust. Yep. Uh, yeah. Battle, 1725. Yeah, you're right. Stardust is pretty bad with no back row. Way to start. Oh, also, back. like, okay, let's let's talk about this a little bit. You Stand see back. Icarus attack. You're like, okay, mm -hmm. he has Sirocco. He has Gale Bora, Kalut, which is at least seven cards. Black Whirlwind, which is nine cards. You're losing that Stardust, and you're losing the game immediately. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Now that you've now that you've seen Icarus attack, making a Stardust, very high risk. It's like you bust your nut for four thousand damage, but you got to top tick out of this situation. To be fair, he's got a lot of busted top decks in his deck. He does, for sure. But some of them are not too great. I mean, is Dark Arm Dragon going to be live? Yeah, Dark Arm Dragon will be live if the Greffer hit. Black Lesser Soldier's not live. True. Uh, Snatch Steel is live. Regeki would be pretty good. That Regeki would probably let you go for at least 2,900 because you got Pyramid Greffer still. Yeah, a Rico or a Pyramid Turtle under those circumstances is Garbanzo, though. Uh. I don't know. I see, yeah. So I see Icarus attack, and I think my Stardust and Greffer are going to die the second the turn passes, right? Uh, yeah. Because this deck has literally anything with Kalut takes out Stardust. Like, totally. Um, he's, like, only, he's only going to set Icarus attack if he has Sirocco in his hand. Otherwise, it's, yeah. it's not going to it's not gonna be set there. Exactly. So, yeah, I don't know. Torrential accomplishes the same exact thing as Icarus attack. Unless you expect to be summoning a Sirocco on the next turn. Yeah. So. I think. I don't know. I think this was a wasted OTK potential. I think if this were a Pyramid Turtle, next turn is the end of the game. Additionally, because you know about the Sirocco now, or you can read the Sirocco now, you could summon Krebens and attack. But that's also a little bit sketchy because they could brain the Krebens and it gives them a Synchro. I think Pyramid is still the safest attacker. Agreed get you to goblin zombie etc i didn't even so think see. about reading the sirocco in the opener based off of the icarus attack that makes a lot of sense that's sick yeah for sure for sure all right let's see what's up Rough let's see what all right. i'm not gonna lie got me off on the wrong foot there but um, let's see if he does have the sirocco oh i'm gonna activate black whirlwind you all there's the black oh, whirlwind this yeah this oh stardust is gone so, now like, exactly that's one of the nine cards we didn't know about and this this is actually a really brutal thing too because now not only is the stardust gone yep there it is but the greffer's gone too because black whirlwind can search for gale gale can have the stardust and that kills yes. both monsters okay so sure we're might not be i was gonna say sure was still bora. Route, not gone that route i imagine but we'll see. now the reason you would add bora here over gale and there's only one reason and that's is because you have, you have gale in hand i've got Either that or you have okay. Blizzy right. in hand. Will, oh, good point. Um, good point. Yeah. Special so. Gale the whirlwind from my hand. Okay, okay. there's the Gale. There's okay. the Gale. Okay. Yep. So, yeah, this just clears yeah, the board. Yeah, You've yeah, gone from, yeah, like, we'll resolving a Feather Duster turn two to, to having nothing on board. Um, we'll this is just a exactly. phenomenal throw, I think. Well, I don't know if it's necessarily a throw, but definitely after you see the Icarus, you got to know there's a Sirocco in the hand. You gotta know, and then you gotta well, sort of put piece together how many cards plus Sirocco kills Stardust Dragon. It's like at least ten cards. It's at least a third or a quarter of the deck. Yeah. So you gotta be careful of that. Okay. Uh, 
I'll go 2,000. If I was Gage, looking at his sets, probably wouldn't have set Icarus Attack there. I probably would have just set Torrential. I wonder if his plan was to play around Bottomless the next turn. But if he's got if he's got Whirlwind in hand, I don't know. I got my own Stardust Dragon. Well, here's the thing too, like you're playing around Bottomless. You've torrentialed your opponent's monster. Your Icarus Attack most likely doesn't have another target. Yeah. This premature is pretty good. This Stardust Dragon is also pretty good. Oh, okay. Man. All right. Here, let's so, pause it here. Let's yeah, think let's about what we can do. Up. This is actually a fucking crazy this premature. This is insane. This is this is the eternally unpunished draw. Look at this. So we talked about not going True Nade turn one, and because he didn't go True Nade turn one, he now has pre mat True Nade. Totally. Uh, I, you could also you could also do some stuff. You, I mean, if even if you didn't have True Nade, you could. Crash Pyramid Turtle, uh, get Goblin Zombie, pre mat Krevins, go into Bryonic, and then go Infinite Premature Burial, <laughs> which is pretty good, I think. Not infinite, but as many zombie yeah. monsters as you have. That's, that is true. Uh, I think... What do we want to do? We want to clear Stardust. We want to set up a board. If I was Alex, what I would do... I would pre mat the Stardust first. Oh, no. Hold up. We're crashing Pyramid Turtle, right? That's the game plan. We're Do getting we Goblin crash Zombie. Pyramid Turtle, we don't have. I mean, Stardust doesn't do much to us here, but we don't have another out. Oh, no. We would have Brio. Never mind. Um,. Okay, I can I mean, see that. We know, he's, we know he's got at least Bora for Kalu or Bora for Blizzy. But that locks him to killing one threat. So if we can set up Bryo Stardust, like Bryo Stardust Krebins, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty strong. I was thinking yeah. using, uh, going Mali Premat for Krebins, Trunade Premat, get Stardust and go for RDA here. How do we Mali? We already used Mali. Oh, we have used Mali. Okay. Yeah, we've already used Mali. That. Unfortunate. We've definitely already for used sure. it. Uh, but I think, yeah, okay, I think yeah, it has to be... Turtle, Pyramid Turtle Crash is the move, for sure. Yeah, Pyramid Turtle Crash, get Goblin Zombie. Premature Burial... Oh, that doesn't... Yeah, you Premature Burial Krebins. Giant Trunade. Synchro into... Bionic. Search... Plague... I'm thinking plague. We don't have a way to get a goblin zombie or a pyramid turtle back from the or a. Well, yeah. you, we have we have premature burial in our hand. Oh, that plague true. is plague is. So we have our hand becomes we our board becomes premat in hand, plague in hand, bryonic in play. The bryonic we pitch the plague. plague. Yeah. Once their stardust, and then we can premat our own stardust, but then we don't have another card to bounce that pre-mat again which is a little unfortunate okay maybe well, it's would... not right to do anything maybe you just set pyramid turtle here <laughs> hold on I know so, that's... so you would go pyramid crash you'd get a grab goblin zombie so you have goblin zombie you'd go pre-mat oh okay i see what you mean yeah because then you'd have to turn it the pre-mat pre -mat first yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah alternatively you could go like pre-mat bring back stardust mm -hmm. prunade Pre-map, bring back Krebins. Normal Pyramid Turtle. Crash Pyramid Turtle. Go get Spirit Reaper. So you have Spirit Reaper, Krebins, Stardust. Crash the Stardust. And then go for uh, attack Re on Reaper hand. attack directly. Yeah, try to hit the card out of his hand. Hit the boar out of his That's hand. That's a cute move. That's a very cute Yeah, the move. issue is you've trunated the Black Whirlwind back to the hand. Well, actually, that's not even an issue, really, because it gives you a chance to hit the Black Whirlwind as well. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, there's a bunch of different plays here. I'm, I'm not sure. really sure what the best one would be. I think the Reaper one might end up being the best. It's hard the to tell. The Reaper one's a heck of a play. I didn't think of that. I was thinking, yeah, Bryonic, Bryonic Bring Back Stardust is probably, is probably the strongest play. I can see the argument for... Honestly, I think the major argument for waiting an additional turn 
is we know we have an additional pyramid turtle in deck which means that if we want to hold the field presence we can and then we have another card for brio yeah also think, yeah. can you can you special summon bora if your only other blackwing is bora hold on because this is where things get get weird i don't know if you can but let me check other than bora the spear yeah so if, if he had gale still in his deck mm -hmm. waiting would be bad but gale's gone so he has no special summons. He can just summon Bora, but he can't special summon another Bora because his only Blackwing is Bora the Spear. Oh, that's true. And he can't special summon Gale because Gale's gone. So th at most, he can hit over two turtles, and then you'll end with the Goblin Zombie in play. Then on the next turn, you'll have an extra draw to do all the Bryonic stuff. You'll actually be able to kill him, probably, because you'll, you'll start off with the Bryonic in main phase one. You won't have to crash your turtle, then do it all in main phase two. I agree. Uh, yeah. The one thing... Oh, you know what would... Well, no. You'd have to have a ridiculously specific hand for this to work. Because, like, the one thing that I think punishes that is if he has Blizzy Bora. So he goes yeah. Blizzy Special Gale Summon Bora. And then he has Brio with an additional card in hand for because of Whirlwind. Which would just end the game. More it would have to be it would have to be Blizzy or like Kalut that he normal summons, which yeah would mean he'd have to read that there's a pyramid turtle set, and he would he would also have to read that he would also have to read that um oh, sorry there's something that he only has two pyramid turtles, and then on top of that, uh, if he goes Blizzy Bora if his hand is Blizzy Bora think you lose the game no matter what <laughs> fair point you got me there. so okay, even if yeah. even if you go for the crazy like brown it crash whatever lines mm -hmm. his hand is blizzy bora if you don't hit the bora with the spirit reaper he has blizzy whirlwind if you don't hit the whirlwind then he has blizzy bora which can out everything and if you don't hit the um if you don't hit the if you don't hit the blizzy then he has bora whirlwind which outs everything as well so you lose the you lose the game no matter what if his hand is Blizzy Bora. So I think you just set the Pyramid Turtle, Prage. Yeah, sounds like a plan to me. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, we'll see. Oh man, we've got that Bora too. Got to worry about that at some point. Please, Alex. Please, Alex. Too, too. Set the turtle. Yeah. Yeah. It does. It's Stardust like doesn't matter when you don't have Shura. I'll say that much. I matter. think this is the play. Uh, we're going to go pre-mat. Okay. 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 I'll get my own Stardust. Yep. Okay. Okay, so you we're have to be going for a big play now. Turtle. Yeah, you're basically right. full committed here. Okay, yeah. What what you no, do not get your, go get to the battle phase. Don't go to the battle phase. Battle phase yeah, button. Don't go to that battle phase button. Don't do it, Alex. Don't do it. I don't think there is. I am going to true nade though. Okay, thank God. Okay, oh, all right. Okay, gosh. we're going for a play. Uh, so with pyramid. Here. No, no, no. What are you doing? No, wait. Yep, oh, <laughs> Why would you okay, crash it's not, the stardust? There we go. It's not uh, bad. Over to you. It's not okay. bad because pyramid turtle chills. Whirlwind Bora it does. It's not bad. It's not. I like don't know. Okay, sure, oh, okay. Sure. Well, you know, sometimes. <laughs> um, I'll go. Yeah, yeah if tough. we had maintained yeah. the Stardust, um, that wouldn't have been an issue here. The there was no way know. to maintain the Stardust, uh, was there? Whirlwind? Well, if we had gone for Brio, yeah, if we had done one of away. the Brio plays, I, do, yeah. I, I think this there weekend, was. You were playing uh, some medicine with RJ. Oh yeah, if you ended Brio Stardust, yeah, could end Brio Stardust with nothing in hand, and then Bora Whirlwind only outs one of those monsters, and then you have. You still have uh, like, what? Like, that Stardust coming sense. back in the end phase. <laughs> oh, you're the, they're ripping they're ripping me for using Chris in the Edison cube. <laughs> That's cursed. Okay, here comes the Bora attack. All right, I know okay, you have this is our Kalut in hand. Alex is actually in a really a bad spot. <laughs> this is not good, Alex. Uh, yeah, this one. is he here. Could you no could you position. pause it right here? Yeah, for could sure. You pause right here. So if you had ended in on Bryo Stardust, I think the issue is he goes Bora Whirlwind, grab Kalu, run over the Stardust, main phase two, Regeki the Bryonic. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does spend the Kalu, which is nice, but ultimately you end with nothing. So this is this is actually best case scenario for Alex. He still has his premature burial. 
he still has potential to maybe combo to get that last 2600 points in mm-hmm. all he needs all he needs is an extra 300 points of damage here and he's able to do it which i think he should be able to piece together thanks to this mystic tomato the mystic tomato can grab goblin zombie and then maybe can synchro into bryonic mm-hmm. next turn with the pre-map for krebins and then um as long as he doesn't take enough damage to put him below 800 we'll see yeah. okay continue, continue, continue. okay all right yeah is annoying I if i'm gauge die. my game plan is get alex below 800 asap yet, yeah so i will set and pass stake okay. here setting mystic tomato bora pierces so yeah. it actually this deals is, more damage to this set is it worse than, than normal okay. summoning it Check yeah out the grave probably got the pre mat and gauge Sam is now Sam wise to the fact that you're on the million recruiter deck okay aka uh, zombies yeah. so exactly exactly yeah oh god we sure. did have blizzy bora i think he topped oh no he searched it. oh do you think he top decked it okay i think he top decked no it. you in the deck no oh wait oh my god wait i do have value in the deck holy shit wait, so he does have value oh that's he's gonna be a big search oh, you had, i don't think you even yeah. had value i pulled one in ancient but yeah i pulled one in the set I, oh there you go wait we have soroko in the graveyard my big mouth. we go yeah, I mean, we go brio I mean, like discard like value much, here but, i mean it's a card so it's a card. if he has brionic this is game yeah if he has brionic this is he definitely has brionic Okay, then this is just game. Yeah, this is just the end of the game. So we sync for Brionic here. Yep. It's pretty straightforward. That was a lucky top deck, Regeki. He's big. Okay, well, he's choking. Giga choking. If you you know Bri- you know the last card in hand is Pre-Mat, so you know he doesn't have, like, Gores or Battle Fader or anything. Just go, um, you just go Brionic, pitch the Vayu, bounce the set monster, Armed Wing with the Vayu and the Sirocco, and then Kalut on the Armed Wing in damage calc. And that's yeah. like well over 5150. I think it's like, what, 6,000, something like that? I think even if you're not even thinking about going game, I would immediately be thinking of ways to get Vayu out of my hand, which is why I thought about Brio. Brio is I'm like, oh, we've got a Vayu in hand. I want to discard Vayu. Oh, that's just Brio. Brio Vayu is just the end of the game here. Yeah. If you're Alex, you have to grab Goblin Zombie. You yeah. can't grab Sangin. Oh you so need to be able to make Bryonic because it's the only way you're you ever sneaking this game out. Possibly a second collude. I think we go Goblin Zombie. Yeah, here. yeah, we gotta get Goblin Zombie. Uh, yep, you need the four star normal? for sure. And I've already normal summoned. I've done my thing. If we get so a... Gage just missed lethal completely. Draw. Yeah. That's not okay. So here, the pause the game. Pause the game. Pause the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's uh, take a look at Alex's deck list again. Now. Rodog Armageddonite gets him access to any monster he wants in his deck. It's looking like there's nothing he wants to reborn that he doesn't already have, though. So that road is just going to end up being a... Hmm. Hmm. Hold up. And he kill. And he kill. If you pre-mat Krebins, synchro into Bryonic... I think you can kill. Us. I don't think you can kill. We I think he's just short. Definitely clear. The question is, can we kill with this extra deck? I'm gonna. Uh, I don't think you can. I think this is pretty bad. That being said, if you kill all these monsters, I mean, like, Gage has like Kalut value, which doesn't do anything. Yeah. So. I think what you do is you go pre-mat Krebins, Synchro Bryonic, search Spirit Reaper. Well, no, Spirit Reaper's bad because you can hit the Vayu. Shit. Um. <laughs> is there a world where the plan here is we go... Uh, we go pre-mat for Krebins, go into, uh, into Brio, that gets us Plague. We... We just have one. We just have two cards. We just have two cards. So yeah, we can either... go. Oh, we wouldn't have a we wouldn't have a zombie on the board then. I was thinking we could go Doom Kaiser, but he doesn't he doesn't have two sixes. That's a major yeah. issue for Alex here. Yeah. Additionally, additionally, um, there's just none of his synchro monsters do anything. The only one that really does is Mistworm, and I'm not sure you can ladder to that here. 
don't think there's a way to do it. Here's actually what I'm thinking. I wonder if the play is we no, this uses up literally everything. I was thinking we could uh you could go Brio You could do you could discard whatever you get off the rota for Brio and then you have RDA. RDA clears the gale and it is immune to a lot of Kalut things that he could do. I don't know. This is a tough one. I think it's I think it's just you go you go pre mat Krebin's Synchro into Bryonic, and then you get a search. And then you normal summon that search, you bounce the armed wing, you attack over Gale, you attack directly. He just at 300, at 2650. Age has Kalut value, which doesn't do anything. And hopefully you're just top deck and clear. Bryonic yeah. in play. I awkward. think that's the only way yeah. to do it. Super awkward that this goblin zombie can only get plague here. Yeah, if it could get like Shiranui Solitaire and make a one card eight star sync. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Fair <Imagine>. enough. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see. Let's see what the plan is. This is a tough spot. This is a tough spot. Yeah. Even it took us even a little while to think of it. Barely. Yeah, he can only deal 2300 at most. Best play, so I don't think I have much of a choice. Uh, I'm on that you have Vayu Double Clue because you haven't used that other card in your hand this entire time. And uh, it could that could be Vayu Double Clue, or it could just be like another Soroko or something. Uh, Who knows? It's really hard to tell what that last we'll card is. Because for... if it was Double Clue, then sure. yeah. and he Giga Miss Lethal. <laughs> Okay, the Brio is smart uh, trigger here. Goblin zombie. Grab I Plague. I will grab myself a copy of... Uh, I guess we'll hit Mr. Plague's here. Yeah. Good guy. Great guy. I think you yeah, do Rota yeah, for the Armageddon Knight before ditching it because you just don't uh, want to draw it. Brio. And you're already well above the darks. Pitch two, bounce both. Bounce the, uh, the monsters? Bounce the monsters, yep. Okay. So oh, you what are you... Extra and gale right. That's the worst. Right, hold up, hold up, hold what up. What was that? Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I need a break, I need a break, I need a break. What? I need, I need a step. So you, so you've got to, so I, you what? go for Arma off of, off of Rhoda and you summon the Arma, pitch whatever monster you have left in your deck that you don't want because you know you're not going to be able to make Dark Arm now and you just run the Gale over and then you have Fuel yeah, Presence. Yeah, you, you probably just sent. doesn't have Gale. Probably just send dark armed. Yeah, oh, either that point, or yeah. you, or you search the second goblin zombie and you summon that. Because if that dies, then you get a search plague and you have an extra card in your hand for Bryo bounce next turn if your Bryonic survives. So actually, no, it's definitely it's definitely um either summon Armageddon Knight, send Dad to thin your deck, or it's summon goblin zombie uh, and then just hope to float that into something good. Obviously, double clue is going to kill you. I mean, you're just at everything here. You're dead yeah. as Gale, Gale Kalut in hand. It's just, uh, you're just we dead. Just and if, donate literally, Gale. No, seriously, if the read was that it's double Kalut, Gale summons here, halves, double Kalut is lethal. Yeah. That's it. So if this that's is... your read, then yeah, no, this is just. Oh my God. Had to kill the Gale there. Yeah. You had that's to kill fine. the Gale, the Gale there. Maybe Alex forgot. I'm sorry, Maybe bro. Alex forgot that he hadn't normal off. summoned just that turn. Off. Oh my God, bro. That's, a, I, I that's why he didn't so normal summon another what? card to attack over the Gale. <laughs> But oh my god. Oh, turns out I wait. Gage is just anyway. a sacker. Oh, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow. Uh so okay. that was interesting. That was Gage missed lethal into Alex choke into Gage sack. Like that. Truly like truly that, uh, an incredible game of Yu-Gi-Oh we've had here. Uh so yeah, all right, sure. side deck, side deck. Uh we see Alex's side deck on on screen. I'm bringing in Dusties. I am absolutely bringing in Dusties here. I'm a big fan of Smashing Ground and Dark Hole against Black Wings. You saw the last game. A lot of the times, Alex would fall behind. He wasn't dead because he uh, doesn't know how to close. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> and then, and then, uh, you know, you just just kill him, kill him Smashing with the Smashing Ground. ground and the Dark Hole. Spirit Reaper is real solid. Also, because Shura is banned, Kaiku's actually insane here because it attacks over everything that isn't Sirocco. It also prevents Vayu. And it prevents Dark Arms from activating as well. So Kaiku's actually really not that bad. So I do like Kaiku. I do like the removal spells. Dust Tornado's also very good. You could side in all seven of those cards and they would be phenomenal, I think. Yeah. 
uh, I think smashing grounds over probably the, the pyramid turtles. Uh, Honestly, yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, I'm trying to so think of Alex what else is a really good side deck for this matchup. He doesn't have bottomless, which is not great. I think but... he does have bottomless. It's just not in his side deck because he was predicting monarchs. Um, I think you need to just cut down your monsters here. And yeah. Just add in removal. I think you need to go minus one tomato, minus two pyramid turtle, maybe even because that's what three cards minus two Ryko, minus BLS, and then minus like giant true nade something. And from there, go for the yeah. I think yeah. that's not a bad call for you sure. Could, you could cut Rota Armageddon Knight or something. And no, I think the Rota's too good. Don't listen to that. Don't listen to that. Yeah. That didn't make no, any I sense. No, I would absolutely keep. Every time I look at, at this deck, I realize there's a tool that I rely on a lot when I play Weladad that just isn't here. Like Stratos isn't here. Mizuki isn't here. We don't have, we don't zombie have Master. Return or Zombie Master. Call of the Haunted. I don't know if you play that or if we're playing that. I don't remember. But that card would be good here. <laughs> I think Call least. of the Haunted is banned in this series wildly. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. Thank that's you right, banned. for the sub for five months. Yo, cheers. All right. Yeah, I'm for sure just bringing in those seven. You could make an argument for Decree because he saw a couple of trap cards. But then after those two trap cards, he saw none other. And Decree's also going to shut off your trap cards, which is how you stop him from killing you so no true uh from gauge i'm looking at bottomless i'm looking at what do we see from alex alex did not set a single monster that game except for oh, the but he mystic tomato should he should yeah, except for the set. one he didn't have yeah. <laughs> so yeah i think i'm citing in bottomless i'm probably going down books honestly if i'm gauge i'm not citing you think? Yeah, straight up. Uh, if anything, you're just bringing in like some Nox or a DD Crow or something. Because you saw the zombies, maybe. But there's no Mizuki, and you know he knows Alex's card pool, right? Yeah, he does. He knows there's no Mizuki, and there's no Book of Life. So the DD Crow actually doesn't do shit. It just stops, yeah. like, Plague, really. This stops pre mat I don't know. I don't know. I feel it's like if, if I was Gage, I just wouldn't side because the deck's fine. Legit. No, Gage's list is immaculate. It's just really I bring good. in like a cr maybe a crow because you can search it off Sangin. Like cut Arma, cut, cut Rota, bring Arma. in like a knock and a crow or like a bottomless and a crow and then yeah. it's probably fine. Sounds solid. I do, I do like book and the reason I like book is because Krebens is going to be a pain in your ass. That's true. Sure. That's true. Uh, so. yeah. Okay. No, we'll see. See how he sides. You think that Simo does have a copy of Book of Life? Well, then we we're just fumbling the bag with this deck building. I don't know what to do. Why the fuck is there no Book of Life in this? What the fuck? <laughs> if you Book told of me life I had insane. Monster Reborn in my collection. <laughs> I know Monster Reborn is banned. I do know that. I know yeah. they have it, but I know it's banned. <laughs> if he has Book of Life and it's not in his deck, someone messed up somewhere. You That's should like, at least be siding it because it's so strong in this matchup. You hit the four, so we can't Blizzy. You hit the Vayu, you hit the Sirocco. It's godly. Yeah. All right. That was exactly my hand, but I don't know why you made that play if you couldn't beat it. So I did. There was nothing else I was gonna do anyway. I mean, I That's was just. It. I think it was lights out regardless. I couldn't clear them anyway. So I uh, did. Yeah, Tilt talk. You can't you can't get tilted under those circumstances. I think he was in a I mean he was in a bad position, but he was Man, in a I, winnable I know I'm position. Shit in the for that Until the Dark Arms so top deck, I think is, Gage yeah. threw lethal, head, and then Alex okay, had a chance to come back, like and then there was. Enough, then I mean, the like, lucky I'm top deck of Regeki and Dark Arms. There's nothing you can really do about that, unfortunately. And this is why we play Edison and not Goat Control. Yeah. If you go back to the very beginning of that match, Simo had lead on Pyramid Turtle, not like played all his so shit won, had I, uh, he might have had a really good chance to win the game we are, uh, yeah i think plenty. i think there was like a <laughs> turn two or three <laughs> kill for semo in there this if is, he had played the conservatively YCS at the beginning yeah, right? okay right, okay yeah. opening hand uh also busted also busted one thing to remember pyramid turtle and mystic tomato are openers it, it's in the name open 
the opener. <laughs> so, <laughs> for future reference. <laughs> okay. You should open it. Yes. This is a very good hand. And again, Gage gets to go first here, I believe. I think Which is so. bad. I think going first with Gage's deck is horrendous. Not only do you miss the draw towards Black Roland, but all of your Sorokos are basically dead cards till turn three. So. I'll go stand by in the main phase. Yeah, I think I think you absolutely go second in a deck that's this battle phase reliant. Because what are we doing with this? Like, unless that's exactly Vayu Ick attack. Mm. It could what be are you Sand doing Gan. here? It could be Sand Gan. What are you doing here? RJ, I'm how are you honestly, playing this game? We don't know about summoning Sand Gan yet. Tomato. I'm normal summoning Tomato. This looks like Vayu Ick attack to me. Okay, well, if it's value Ick attack, and we're normal summoning tomato. Uh huh. Are we setting the wind blast afterward? I think I'm attacking into the face down here with tomato. Yeah, yeah of course, of course. But I'm saying, like, after you attack, are you setting the wind blast? Um. I think probably not. I think for me to worry about any normal summon that he gets next turn enough to want Wing Blast, he'd have to have Whirlwind, which I know is a two of in his deck. I just think I would force him to attack into the tomato and give me the Goblin Zombie before I give him the chance to attack. I think what I would do here is slightly different. I think I would summon Sangin. The reason I would summon Sangin is because A, last game we saw Torrential. B, we also saw Icarus attack. Both of those cards pretty poorly against Sangin. Sangin's going to be able to attack pretty freely into this monster. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, you can set your Wind Blast behind Sangin. Even if they summon a Sirocco and you want to Wind Blast the Sirocco for whatever reason, mm -hmm. Icarus attack is still only going to be a two for two because at least your Sangin will get a search. Yeah. So I think that. I think that summoning Sangin's a little bit better. Sangin's going to run over the exact same things that Mystic Tomato's going to run over. And if they can't kill your Sangin because you Wind Blast their monster, or you Wind Blast whatever, or if they don't attack your Sangin for whatever reason, next turn you can sack it for Kaius and you're just, just crushing. That's a good I think, point. I was thinking that Mystic Tomato puts you up on normal summons in a way that Sangin doesn't necessarily, but if you can protect Sangin with Wing Blast, then you're fine anyway. That's a good call. Yeah, for sure. Plus, you do have to you do have to consider even though it is a one of you do have to consider the fact that the back row could be torrential. It could be torrential value. That is definitely something you should maybe think about at least for now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Uh, anything is standby. Nope, you're good. Gee, let's see what Alex does here. Right. Uh, what are the stats of? Some I think. Of these I mean, cards? I don't think there are I many remember. other options you could like go for than one of the two like that really we just talked about. Line, I think. Yeah. Unless he wants to set um, tomato, but I'm that's just such a colossal sure throw. And I think Alex Otherwise is going to play around so Icarus attack at this sure. point, especially because this is so like, sure, telegraphed that it's either okay, Ick attack or Sangan. There's Gale, there's Blizzard. Which I don't know either I wish I was dead. How's it going? Like setting anything at this point? Honestly, think uh, honestly, think summon Sangan's okay. good too because it Let's if they like steal your Sangan too and try to synchro with it. This. I if they like, I don't know. Oh, there's just like a million other ways. Yeah, I definitely would have started with Sangin here. Yep. I think this is a little bit worse. The forest north. Yep. Trying to get me with that Icarus That's attack. That's uh, okay, pause, pause the video. Pause the video. Pause, pause the video. That's such pause a video. bizarre open. Pause the video. Just don't set the Blizzy. Just don't set it. Just take the 200 damage or whatever. You can take damage early in the game. That's what the point of your. What is Alex going to do turn one that you need to Icarus on his turn? Also, when you set like that, when you T set like that, Alex is going to play around Icarus anyway. Yeah. Now we know about the Icarus, so we definitely don't set the Wind Blast. Issue here with this opening, though, is that you can't set the Wind Blast. So now if Gage has like some sort of crazy shenanigans, like even just Lunar, Monster, Dark Arms, you can't Phoenix Wing it gonna get crushed because if you had sangin fa face up you could phoenix wing the crazy play more or less and then also like on the next turn like let's say he doesn't attack the mystic tomato you still can't set the wind blast gage engages in a drago situation and the drago situation will always favor the person who has a curse attack in play so 
Uh, this All is why right. summoning Sangin, Sangin here is, is definitely the right play. You have convinced me. All right, all right, all right. Continue, continue, continue. All then, right. But that, I never set the Blizzard there. Never yeah. set Blizzard. That's your best card. No, it's... Card's Pot of Greed. Um, I'm going to normal summon wow. Armageddon Knight. And I'm going to sure. activate... Oh, my God. Immediate punished. Losing the no. Blizzard after the Armageddon yeah, Knight's play. this is... Going to and did he top deck he that? It looks like he top decked go. that. Yeah. This is also bad, too, because Armageddon Knight does not attack favorably into Mystic Tomato. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think right, he's I just realizing that right now. Yeah. Yeah. No, maybe he's not. So now you've got a card that loses to Mystic Tomato and Icarus attack. This is just a dead board right here. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. And that's an insane draw. Not terrible. Wow. Not terrible. Good. Shock on this. See, I don't shock on this. I actually crash first. Because you want to, you want to hit the monster that you're trying to get. Because you're almost, you're almost certainly getting Goblin Zombie up. No, Spirit Reaper's also a pretty good choice. Hey, you want to grab Spirit Reaper or whatever. Yeah, but Spirit the thing Reaper. is, is like you want to thin it out of the deck before you pot of greed, so you have a higher chance of hitting fucking painful choice. So true. I'm probably, true. I'm probably crashing first here, then going to get the Spirit Reaper and then poking Reaper. and then pot of greed afterwards. Yeah. And then I think. I think if it's me, I go I go attacking with Tomato. I'm reading the Icarus attack because why wouldn't you when your opponent sets their blizzard? Right. One. Literally. So I'm I'm crashing, I'm going for Reaper, I'm taking a card out of their hand, and I'm sacking Reaper for Caius to banish that Icarus attack so Gage doesn't have any threats left available. Uh Wing Blast. Ooh, that's now. a good play. Wing Blast now is basically the end of the game, right? Because Gage would have to normal summon a monster that can let him special summon either Bora or a Gale from hand. So if you just hit the normal summon back to the top of the deck, you win next turn. I actually like that play a lot. My my play was going to be commit the Sangant. Actually, Kaya's targeting the dead Icarus attack is pretty solid. I think you only really get punished if the back row is not Icarus attack, but obviously it's, it's 100% Icarus attack here. So I do like grabbing reaper you could also make an argument for grabbing goblin zombie but the best goblin zombie search target plague is already in your hand so yeah definitely reaper poke sack for caius that seems great alternatively you could grab krebin's sack for caius you don't get to poke the hand but you set up your power well i don't know how much that matters your hand's already fantastic you can probably get away with the hand poke ah yeah I like this yeah this is a really solid position for alex okay yeah not I mean, pot games. of greed Why certainly do doesn't hurt, but even if that pot of greed was like literally anything no else, this position is really strong. You know, this is crushing. I don't think there's a chance he can lose this game unless he like throws. You would have to mess up like six or seven times from this point to mess up. Like he would have to sack his tomato, Caius, target his set power well, and then dark hole his own Caius. Lose this game. Like he would have to make like six. This unbelievably bad play. He still no, have sand can't play. Like, oh, well, he's starting we off doing? with. Oh my no. god! Don't target the monster. You know, oh what? my! You can. Oh my! We know what the back row is. Okay, okay, okay stop, stop, stop. Pause the video. Pause, 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 pause the fucking video. Pause the fucking video. Holy shit! Okay, hold the fuck up. Hold the fuck. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, RJ. I I shouldn't be freaking out like this. So let's let's talk here. Yeah. Mystic Tomato Crash Armageddon Knight. That's plus one, right? Yes. Fear Reaper Attack directly. That's plus two. I just target the back row that's plus three. Alex just threw away a plus three. And even if you're going for goblin zombie off of the off of the tomato, you get another goblin zombie off of that. And exactly. you have exactly. a Brio you, or basically set up for next turn because you have Phoenix Wing on the board. Yeah, no, this, no, is insane. This, is ins this is insane. This is insane. This is insane. This is insane. The you worst end this possible option. You literally end this with this exact same board, except your opponent's back row is banished. There's a card in their hand missing. Like you're literally just throwing away plus plus three. It's insane. This is oh a my rough gosh. one for sure. That was uh that was That's... hard to watch. Okay. So like I said, he needs to make like six misplays. That was only three. So let's okay. Let's let's see if he makes three more. Let's see if he makes three okay. more. Okay. And right. so so MTG name, if he's playing around dad. Honestly, I don't play around dad at this point, right? Because we have Wing Blast. What's he going to do? Dad the Caius? And then also, you Wing Blast and you still win next turn? Also, like, yeah. Like, you Wing Blast the Dad when he's at two darks. Because he goes... 
like let's say let's say first off let's say your spirit reaper connects and doesn't hit a dark monster that your spirit reaper has a 33 percent chance to hit arc armed mm -hmm. ready that's amazing second off if he has any wing beast he just summons it icarus is your shit drops dad if he wants to um, yep third off if he summons dad you're at eight thousand. He pops your Caius, you're like, okay. He pops your Windblast, you chain it. He has one Dark Engrave. You put a dead Dark Armed on top of his deck. He has one other card at this point. The back row's been banished. Well, two other cards because he draws for turn. So he has two other cards at this point. You have a Plague Engrave, you have a Dark Hole, you have a Sangin. You can easily make a Synchro. Your Ryko can pop anything. You have Dark Hole to pop anything. You could even just let the Dark Arm resolve. You don't even have to Windblast it. You could just Dark Hole it. Uh, you're totally fine in that instance. So yeah. I think that you, you're not even worried about Dark Arm from this point, especially when your opponent has so few cards to put together 8,000. No, definitely. Definitely not a worry. I'm trying to think of what else Gage has in hand here because if he has a single other monster, he's playing it, right? He might have a second Blizzard. That might have been what he thought empowered him to play the first one, turn one. For I sure. If no, it's that's like... a great. that's a great analysis. I think you're absolutely right. I, I wonder if it's like Blizzard, Kalute, and something else. I don't know. I think... And if, if it's Blizzard, Kalute, something else, or even if it's just Blizzard, something else, hitting the Arma and getting the Spirit Reaper get a good chance to put him on four darks would make Dad like even more dead than if he was only on two. Exactly. And at this point, too, he can just summon Blizzy, bring back Bora, Synchro, and then he has three darks. So, like... Yeah. You just always go for the Reaper there. Always go for Kai's the back row. Just cut off the Icarus attack that you know about. And then have a live Wind Blast. Have board presence. Your opponent's at 4,600. You kill them for sure next turn because you Wind Blast whatever they play. You have Plague Engrave and then 5 star plus Kai's is lethal. This is definitely a, okay. definitely well, a mistake see. here. That's one of seven. Let's see what what game one of got. No, that was three of seven. That was three oh, that's of seven. Three of seven. That's true. Didn't, didn't crash the tomato. Yeah. So he's uh, got four didn't... left. Okay, uh, here's Black Whirlwind. Pretty good draw. Oh the my god. Okay. Um. So you knew about this, right? We knew about the Blizzard. Hitch, plague targets, Blizzard. Oh, you know what? This isn't too bad because Whirlwind will trigger and I'll. No, Whirlwind, Whirlwind does not trigger. trigger. But oh, Whirlwind will not trigger. It needs to check the attack on resolution. That's fine. No, that resolves. Yeah, honestly, this is fine, though, because Blizzard resolves and you have just an Ick. You basically just got a free Ick attack. You still get your Uh, I don't know. I think if I was Gage, I would have... If I have Icarus attack set, I would have chained it. Oh, well, there's... Yep. That can have the Caius. Pretty good generic sevens. Right? That's not bad, though. You still oh, have Dark Hole. Oh, shit. Oh, my God, bro. I'm going to Synchro oh, he's for popping seven? Off. He's popping Dark Strike Fighter? What does he got? No, Dark Bella. Strike's banned. Let's... Oh, my oh, God. Oh, wait. No, no wait. Go. Oh, my God. He's crazy. <laughs> wait, what the um, fuck? That's wild. The Icarus attack is still dead. It is still dead. That's Her true. Over. <laughs> yeah, this is actually but kind of Alex weird. wind blasted Blizzard. And then... The effect of Urbellum trigger, yeah, which means it's back misses, next uh, turn. Oh, oh, this is. This is... Hey, look, this oh just like my to me. Just, yeah. God, and uh, this four, this four loses to basically everything. Why would you win blast the Blizzard? Just let him search the Vayu, then win blast the Synchro. Yeah. Am I am I missing something? Uh, greatest, am I? Am I missing something? Blizzard doesn't beat Kaius okay. on its own. Neither does the Vayu. All right. We're pausing. What are you doing here? I mean, you only have one play. It's just dark hole. Yeah, I think yeah. you you dark hole set Ryko pass. Either that or you set mm -hmm. Ryko. That or you set Ryko. They're forced to go Bryonic search Vayu, and then they bounce your Ryko. And the next turn, you can dark hole to stabilize. But like, you just you, but you lose so much. You yeah, lose, you lose so, much. so much to that. No, this is so bad. This is so fucking bad. That was like, that was insane. The wind blast. That was mis you could. Okay, another thing you could do. You could stack your worst card. Here, telekinetic power well, right? Summon mm -hmm. plague. Summon Sangin synchro five. We've got get a oh, Sangin. We know search. that that's a. We know that that's a dad. A, a dead ick attack. 
You know it's a dead Ick attack, so you can attack over the Urbellum. Does he have Android or, like, Catastor or something? What does he, he have? He has Catastor. Oh, he has both, I think. Yeah. He does. He, and Android's good because he gained life, too. So you could go You could and go it Android. Beats armed it's, wing. Beats armed wing. It doesn't beat Bionic, which he's going to go for, obviously. But then you have Dark Hole for follow-up. So you have Dark I think, Hole Krebins for the follow-up. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I, I think you have to go into a five-star here. It's just a matter of what Sangin is searching. I think in this state, because we know we're getting rid of Plague, I think we need to get Krebins into rotation. I don't think yeah, this deck wins without Caius or Krebins at this point. Yeah, so if we're searching Krebins, we actually shouldn't shuffle away the Well. We should shuffle away the Raiko. Agreed, agreed. Because you're, you're going to stack Raiko, and then you're going to summon Sangin, and then... Uh, and then you have the Sangin search will shuffle away the Raiko. Well, next turn. Yeah, and it's it's only bad if you top deck specifically BLS, but yeah, I don't know. And if he's top decking Blizzard, if he's forced to go into Brio, then we know that the uh, if he's forced to go into Brio because he's got Android on the board, so he can't go into Armed Wing, then we know that he's going to be on a dead yeah. Ick attack again next turn. We also know that Goyo Guardian is banned, right? So there's no yes. six star that can even get over Android. Okay, sure. so this is, I like this play. I like this play. It also conserves the Dark Hole. So when he does go for Bionic Pitch, you can then clear that with Dark Hole if you need to. Yeah. So, Having the read on yeah, this. Yeah, and Android Games like, like that. God, that set Blizzard. <laughs> that set Blizzard is going to haunt me. <laughs> because even, even if it like... Just losing the blizzard is bad enough, but now Alex knows for the rest of the game that your back row is some fake ass shit. That you're like your literally. back row is just like literally just absolute poser. It just incredible. Okay. I guess we're just like resetting it. I think waiting on the wind blast was a was misplay number four. So we need misplay number five, six, and seven to see a loss here. All right. We still need three more misplays. We, but we, we've had four misplays here that and could cost. I don't know I if Gage is <coughs> to clear play last turn with Supergirl. What the fuck? So the if we don't you know clear the on here, he's free to go for a for a winged beast off of this. Which Oh, or he could just top deck the Darkarm. He didn't top deck it, he had it. Oh, he had it? Wait, he had Dark Armed, he just didn't play it last turn. And it didn't matter. When you're Did not fucking matter. Illiterate, bro. Wait, wait, pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it. Pause it, pause it, pause it. He had a live Dark Armed last turn. He just didn't play it. Why? I legitimately couldn't tell you. Uh, it doesn't... This game, yeah, this is game, right? This yeah, this game. Is maybe he was just game. waiting. Maybe he was waiting for the game shot. That's what I was thinking. Because if you know that Alex has Raigeki Dark Hole, you might yeah. want to. You might want to conserve Dark Armed for a game shot. But let's say, let's say you summon Dark Armed on the last turn, for example, and then you pop the Caius and then you attack for five thousand. No, it's it's the blizzard's still not good enough on its own. Okay, yeah. No, that makes sense to hold it. I think, it makes sense I to think, hold it. There was no way you were getting Yeah, I think Gage has played this game too really well. Um You know, set blizzard's not that great. Oh, I forgot about the goddamn set blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not the best. He also doesn't he miss the whirlwind search here? He's supposed to search for Vayu. That's true. I think he's just thinking like there's no like way. The it doesn't matter. Yeah, because yeah, there's no gores or whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was thinking if you didn't have that. If he had synchroed, he would have been uh, fine. I could survive with Raiko, but if he had synchroed into Android, attacked over the Urbellum, he would have been fine. No battle. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I if I wasn't greedy, I could have dark hold to clean this up, and I wouldn't have been dead. It doesn't. Here. Yeah, that wouldn't have been a bad play. It doesn't. Twenty two hundred. No, I wouldn't. Have, well, I wouldn't. So I think dark, okay, saving the dark hole so would have been the best play. Yeah. The dark hole so, out means you wouldn't so have died. So if you right? figure out the yeah, if you so figure out the plague saying can play, the then that's obviously the best. So my thinking but if you're just looking at your hand in that situation, I think there's like. And then I dark hole your board. Then next turn I go normal sangen and then plague and then make like catastor or. Okay, so he knew about the plague for catastor play. He just chose not to do it the turn before. 
But why? You just said, okay, l let's play that back. What did he say? I don't understand why he didn't do it. I oh, can't... We knew it was Icarus attack. I don't know. Hmm. These are also Macro? it's lagging a bit, right? I dark hole your board. Then next turn I go normal Sangen and then plague and then make like Hold a test. I'm buffering a ton. All right. That's okay. Yeah. I don't know. The other thing is like it's it's easy for us to criticize these, but like these episodes you prepare for like five minutes in advance, right? You're playing you're playing a million of these episodes for sure deck every time. Like for sure, and and well adapted. It's also is a like hard deck to play. Like even when you're playing the version in Edison, that's like streamlined. And on top of that, Alex and Gage. While I'm sitting here all comfy in my chair, I play this format every day for the last like six years. <laughs> yeah. Alex and Gage are playing every format of Yu-Gi-Oh in progression and like in their different series. Not only that, they're competing at YCSs in modern events. They, you know, they're stretched between the formats. For sure. But like these like tiny little nuanced things that like I maybe see because I'm familiar with the format or you maybe see because you've been practicing in the format recently. Uh, they maybe just, you know, they're picking up, they're literally picking up these stacks five minutes before. So it's very easy to like point and yeah, you're you're absolutely right rj you're absolutely and they right. they just got back from edison as or from edison as from ycs as they are filming this i'd i'd love to see them run this back like i would love to see what this matchup looks like when both of them are more familiar with the decks because i think yes. these are just like two of the best decks we've seen in progression series ever yeah these like, were really these were strong. really strong decks yeah, these are really strong. It's kind of sad that Alex really didn't get to show off any of his combos. And it's also kind of sad that Gage just happened to have Dark Armed on three darks with an OTK set up both games with Black Whirlwind. But kind of just the way it goes. They're playing with a lot of power spells. I mean, it's just the way it goes. So I Wish I Was Dead is giving us, giving us a hot tip off here. It says, I can show you what I'm cooking for two episodes from now on progression. We're going to take who a look said at that? what they're cooking. I wish what? I was dead. The person who made this Blackwing deck for Gage. Which, again, let's check it incredible out. work on this Blackwing deck. Yeah, I would love to see that. Get the inside scoop. Synchro Fusionist Dimension Fusion. Holy. Oh, that's actually sick. So What? I'm Hold up. Guessing... I can't see this. I can't see this. So Oh, Wait, so... I hop on we don't have a we don't have a list yet, but it says synchro fusionist plus dimension fusion. That's insane. That sounds lit. I so that would mean, I'm guessing that means that that Gage gets either Draco Aquist or armored or uh, ultimate axon kicker. Ultimate axon kicker is an unbelievable card. Have you ever read that card? That card is insane. One it's of the coolest insane. cards. One of the coolest cards ever printed and very, very powerful. Yeah, for sure. Uh, wait. Wait. No way. Synchro Fusionist can search fusion spells, which includes Dimension Fusion. Wait. Are you messing with me right now? That's insane. That's so sick. Fuck off. Holy shit. That is so cool. What? That is so cool. Oh, I cannot wait to see that list. That is please, so nuts. Please tell me that happens in the app. That needs to happen in the app. I don't even care if they re-record it 18 times, script it. I don't care. I need to see Synchro Fusionist <laughs> search for Dimension Fusion. <laughs> I need to see about it. about to get Shadow Realmed. True. True. For sure. All right, well, Keegan, thank you for having or for for coming on with me. This is this has been a blast. Uh, excellent to see or to hear your insight on on this limited format. I think you would crush it at a progression series. I think I would too. Unfortunately, I think I missed the the cutoff for progression series being cool. So 
we'll see. We'll see if one day I'm in a limited environment like this. Someday and, we'll do a we'll do yeah. a live progression series together. Something like that with real cards or something that'd be high. Real cards. That would be pretty sick for sure. All right, All right RJ, thank you for calling. Thank you on. for having me on. I'll see you soon. Later, it's bro. Been a blast. See ya.